You want to be competitive in the modern economy? Just learn to code. Just learn to code, bro. Just learn to code. That's what you need if you want to get a good job. You want to be successful? Just learn to code, bro. Right? You're probably sick of hearing it by now. So I thought I'd make this video to uh, give you something that I hope is a little bit more helpful. Now, coding is a great skill to have, right? It's, it's in high demand. Uh, the demand is growing. There's always more and more uses for coding in the marketplaces. If you are a coder, you'll never have to worry about lack of jobs, uh, etc. But it's not the only option, right? It's a great option, but it's not the only one. There are plenty of other skills out there that will make you successful too, like sales, for example, right? Sales is, is um, high paying and it's uh, not going away anytime soon. And that's just one example. So don't feel bad if you watch this video and you decide that coding is not right for you, right? It's definitely not for everybody. And if it's not right for you, then there's plenty of other great options. And then if it is for you, if you do enjoy coding and you do think you want to uh, point your career in that direction, then there are a million different approaches, right? There's a whole bunch of different programming languages. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can use those programming languages. There's a whole bunch of different jobs uh, that include coding. And so, you know, just learn to code, bro, is not very helpful, even if you know that that's already what you want to do, because there's so many different ways to take it. Now, the big mistake that a lot of people, maybe most people make with their careers, myself included when I got started, is starting with the skill uh, and then just kind of building from there. So you say, okay, well, this skill is cool. This skill is, um, you know, is, is hip right now. So I'm going to learn this skill and then hopefully that's going to get me into a great career. And this is the big college mistake, right? This is why people go to college. They think, oh, I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna learn all of this great stuff and somehow that's gonna get me a great career. The, the problem is that you're doing it backwards, right? You need to start with the end in mind. You wanna say, this is the career I want and then I'm going to fill in the skills that I need in order to get that career. Right, you see the difference. Instead of starting with, hey, I wanna learn this skill and hopefully that will get me into a good place, you're saying, this is the place that I want to end up what are the skills that are going to get me to that place? So obviously the first thing you have to do is you have to figure out what career do you actually want, right? And I know that's not a simple question, right? There's a million different careers out there. Probably most of them you've never even heard of, much less uh, actually explored what it takes to get those careers. So that's a process. And if you don't know what career you want at this point, that's okay, right? You don't have to pressure yourself. You don't have to come up with it tomorrow. Um, if you are in that situation and you, you are still trying to figure out which career is right for you, then I did a series of trainings on that in my Facebook group and the Career Hackers official Facebook group. Uh, if, you are, if you want to find out what is the right career for you, I think you'll find those super helpful. It's completely free. I'll put a link in the description below to the Facebook group. Just um, take a look through the trainings in the group and you'll find there's a series of them all about a systematic way to find the right career for you. So let's say that you want to be a computer programmer, right? Which is kind of the most straightforward coding job. Um, it's a great choice, right? For a lot of reasons. You get paid well, it's in high demand. You'll never have to worry about uh, being unemployed uh, the, and the demand is growing. You know, the benefits are good. You get a fair amount of freedom. Like there's a lot of remote work as a, as a programmer if you want to work remote. Like there's a lot of upsides to the, the field. So let's say that that appeals to you. Well, then two questions arise. Number one, can you do it, right? Like, do you have the capable capability of doing it? And two, do you like it? Like, is it the kind of work that you would actually enjoy doing? So let's go into each of those in a little bit more detail. So first of all, can you do it? Um, this one stops a lot of people in their tracks, and I think unnecessarily, because all of us kind of create stories about ourselves that we continually telling, tell ourselves over and over again that may be based on, uh, let's say, very little evidence. So maybe we were told growing up that we weren't smart, or maybe we tried something when we were six years old and we weren't very good at it, and so then we created this identity for ourselves that you know we'll never be good at this thing, or we're, we're not smart, or we don't have the personality for this thing, or you're not analytical enough, or you know whatever, right? There's all these stories that we tell ourselves that are based on very outdated and usually very little evidence. So notice, first of all, are you telling yourself some kind of story about that you can't? And if you are telling yourself that story, is it really true? 
right? And this is something that turns into a self-reinforcing cycle, right? So if you believe, let's say that something happened in your childhood that made you think that you weren't good at math, for example, um, maybe you like failed your first math test when you're five years old and then ever since then you thought that you weren't good at math. Well, that belief would have affected your performance for the entire rest of your life, right? So you created that belief, I'm not good at math, and the next time you had a math test, well, you have that belief in the back of your head saying, hey, I'm not good at math, and so you failed the next math test too. Not because you actually weren't good at math, but because you told yourself you weren't good at math. It became a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you, know, if you have any issues around that, I highly recommend a video I did just recently. I'll put the link up here, uh, all about how to increase your intelligence, which is very much the same thing, right? If you have this idea that I'm not intelligent, or you have this kind of set idea of where your intelligence is, it makes it very hard for you to rise above it. And so in that video, I show you how you can, how you can rise above it and how you can uh, tell yourself better stories. Anyway, so the first question that, that comes up is, can you do it? And so my general advice for that is just assume it's a yes, right? <laughs> just give yourself the benefit of the doubt, assume that you can, and then get into the second question, which is the more important question, and that is, do you like it? Right? Is it something that you enjoy? Is it something that you would like to spend a sizable portion of your career doing? And if the answer is no, then obviously don't do it. <laughs> right? Don't torture yourself. If you don't like doing the thing, then number one, you're not going to be very good at it because you're not really going to put much effort on it. And, and secondly, I mean, even if you know, it pays well and it gets good benefits and all that stuff, uh, you're... You, you, even if you can force yourself to do it, well, you're going to be miserable. So, like, why even try? So, you know, if you don't like it, then, then don't do it. People have different tastes. If you don't like it, that's okay. And so, the, obviously, the easiest way to, to uh, determine whether you like it or not is just give it a try. There's all sorts of free programming uh, or coding lessons that you can do on the internet, like all over the place, where you can actually try it and see if you like it. So one that I recommend is a site called codeacademy.com. Um, and I took a course on there on Python, which is a particular programming language. They have a whole bunch of programming languages. You can just kind of choose one that sounds interesting to you. Take the Python one if you like. I recommend it. I thought it was great. And, and just go through it and see how it is, right? See, like, is this, is this fun? Is it a challenge? For me, it's fun. Right? For me, it's, it's kind of like a, a stimulating mental challenge that I do over and over again, and it's a little different every time, and it's, it's like logic puzzles to me. So I enjoy it. You might not, and, and that's okay, right? So if you find it dead boring, then that's probably a good indication that this is not really the right career field for you. But if you find it fun and engaging, then it may very well be a good career field for you. So let's say that you decide that coding is pretty cool and you would like to be a programmer or something related in some sort of, of way. Now the question is, where the heck do you start, <laughs> right? Because there are so many different job positions, there are so many different uh, job titles and job functions, there are so many different programming languages, there are so many approaches and like things that you're doing with the programming language. Where the heck do you get started? To me, this process has three steps. Right, three steps to getting you to uh, a solid programming career. The first is figure out what kind of programming job do you want to have. Right, so you can, I mean, you can go through job boards, we'll give you uh, an idea of this, but like a few of the, the kinds of programming that they have, like you can build websites, uh, you can build phone apps, you can build business software, you can build um, cybersecurity stuff. Um, <laughs> you can tell by my description that I don't understand that field very well. Uh, but you can, like, there's anything that you do on a computer or a computer-like device like a smartphone, somebody had to build that thing, uh, whether it's, it's um, at work or at home, or, uh, you know, there's, there's building algorithms. That's a big thing these days. Building artificial intelligence, machine learning, that kind of stuff. So, you know, go explore a little bit. Figure out which one of those is the, uh, is the most appealing to you. Like, which one of those do you think that you would enjoy and be successful at? And if you've followed me for any length of time, you probably know that I come from a career as a data analyst, uh, which is kind of a, like a programming light. 
Uh, I really, really enjoyed being a data analyst because it's, it, and I got into it kind of by accident, but it, what I love about being a data analyst is that you're getting into programming, like you're getting into coding, but it's very light coding. Like it's only a little bit, it's very easy, like it's quick to learn, but at the same time, the field is in super high demand. Like there's always tons of jobs open and not that many people that are qualified for it. And you get all the same benefits, right? Like the same benefits as a typical programmer. So you get the high salary, you get the great benefits, right? You can work from home in a lot of the positions, et cetera. So being a data analyst might be a position that you might want to pursue as well, even though it's, I don't exactly considering it, consider it a coding position. Like there's a little bit of, of coding, but it's very basic on the coding side which uh, actually is, is helpful if you want to get into coding. It's actually, it's a, a really good first step because it's, it's such kind of a low barrier to entry. So um, that's step one is figure out what kind of programming job or coding job or somewhat related job like data analyst interests you. And then step two is figure out which skills are in demand for that particular job. And this is where the job descriptions and the job boards are really helpful. So figure out what job you want. So let's say that you wanna be a, um, a cybersecurity analyst, for example. Then you would go search for cybersecurity analyst in LinkedIn or whatever job board you're looking at, and just take note of which skills are in the requirements. And, and every job is gonna be a little different. There's always gonna be, and it might get a little overwhelming, right? You might find that there's 20 different skills. But if you can find like maybe there's three or four skills that just keep getting repeated over and over and over again, that's probably the place to start. And then finally, the third step is to find a training program to learn those skills. And there's a, you know, a lot of different training programs. Well, depending on which field you're in, um, some of them have like a lot of training programs. Some of them have just a few, but basically you want to find a training program that matches the skills that you found that are in demand. And, and sometimes, uh, sometimes skills are interchangeable, by the way, like for example, in the data analyst field, there are, there's uh, data visualization is one of the big skills and there's a, a hundred different programs that do the same thing, right? And so like the biggest ones are Tableau and Power BI and uh, Looker is another one. And so if you understand that, then you can see okay, you know, this program teaches Power BI, uh, but that's equivalent to Tableau or Looker. So if I see Tableau or Looker in a job description, I understand that's basically the same thing because they're interchangeable. Now, one big thing that, I, like, I, I try to pound this into people's heads, and it's really hard for people to understand this, but you do not need a degree or a certification. Like, you just don't. People are so crazy to get a degree or certification. Like, oh, I need a master's degree. I need a college degree of some sort. I need a certification. Basically, what people have been brainwashed to believe is they need a permission slip. They need a piece of paper with somebody else's signature on it that says, I give you permission to go get the job you want. And I'm telling you, please, I'm, I'm like saying this over and over again, I feel like a broken record, but you do not need it. You do not need somebody's permission. You need to learn the skills that is going to be helpful to your employer, the skills that are in demand in the marketplace. You do not need somebody's permission. I know we've all been brainwashed to believe this because since we were like five years old, we've been in this school system that tells you you need permission for everything. You need permission just to get up and go to the bathroom, <laughs> right? So, so we're all brainwashed with this, but please, you do not need permission. Don't go looking for degrees and certifications unless it's actually required by law. Like if you wanna be an open heart surgeon, yeah, you probably need some sort of medical degree for that. But as a programmer or, some, or a data analyst or something similar, you just don't need it. And then when you're going to find a, a program to train you, ideally you wanna find one that's focused on getting you hired. Again, like this is the problem with the college model. The college model is like, I'm gonna keep you for as long as possible and put as much information into your brain as we possibly can and then release you out on the world and see what happens, right? You want something that's the opposite, it's career focused. Um, so for example, in my data analyst mentorship program for my clients, um, uh, we start with the end in mind. We, we focus on the skills that are necessary to get a job as a data analyst. 
right? And there's, I see, it's, it's ridiculous to me. There's all these other like data analytics boot camps out there that are trying to force as much information down people's throats as they possibly can, like 80% of which is completely irrelevant, is not going to get them anywhere, right? So you, you really want to avoid that. Focus on the, like the 80-20 rule, the 80% of, of, or I'm sorry, the 20% of information that's going to get you the 80% of the results, uh, which is in this case, getting you hired, right? You're not there to learn, you're there to get hired and learning is a step on the process to getting hired. So if you can find a program like that and that really focuses um, on not only just learning the skills, but also the skills to getting you hired, like how to apply your experience when, like how to approach an employer when you have zero experience and you've just taken a program, like how do you uh, bootstrap yourself to actually get hired in that situation, right? And so if you're interested in a program like that for learning uh, to be a data analyst, then the Career Hacker Data Analyst Mentorship Program does exactly that. I will work with you personally to get you the skills and get you hired, including all steps of the hiring process. If you would like me to hold your hand and actually do that with you, then feel I invite you to apply. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, we don't accept all applications, but we go ahead and apply. We'll see if we think it might be a good fit. We'll have a chat with you, give you all the details. Um, so again, link below if you're interested in doing that. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. Hit, please hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you might also enjoy this video as well.